A few weeks ago, as some of you might remember, I had a bit of a dumb and shot a nail right into this finger. So I printed up a quick sign reminiscent of those old accident scoreboards that you used to find in factories and, I don't know, mines? This gives me an idea for a project. And several of you said that I should make a real one. So I have teamed up with, and this is the exciting part, Micro Center to build an electric version of that sign. And I am super excited to have Micro Center as a sponsor. There's a location here in Dallas that I've been shopping at for years, and one of my favorite parts about them is they've got a dedicated makers area. They carry a big selection of Arduino boards, uh, Raspberry Pis, sensors, and shields. They have prototyping supplies, a big selection of 3D printing filament on hand. They even have parts for building arcade cabinets. I love buttons. And for you guys, right now, they are giving away a 128 gig thumb drive and a 128 gig micro SD card with adapter, totally free. Just follow the link down in the description. I already got mine. You can never have enough of these on hand. Oh, and with Micro Center, I can order online and pick it up the same day, which is great when I've got a project deadline and I need parts right now which is pretty much always the case, uh, even with this build. So I stopped by my local micro center and picked up a few supplies to get started. So as you've already seen, I'm actually making two boards. One is gonna use an old fashioned chalkboard, like the design I'm basing this on. More on that one later. The other is gonna use what's called an egg crate display, which is, uh, it's basically an LED display, but with incandescent bulbs, like an old scoreboard. This little doodad is a clock circuit. Uh, now I'm only counting days on this board, so I don't really need the accuracy this provides, but uh, to me it's just more elegant. And besides, it's only $4.99 at Micro Center. Okay, so I've already written the part of the programming that checks the clock. All we're doing now is testing the part that turns the bulbs on. Huh. Why are they blinking? Nothing in here would make them blink. No. No. Wait, why is it only the green ones? Hang on. Oh my God. <laughs> I picked all these LEDs up at a surplus place a few years ago and they weren't labeled. These are blinking LEDs. Okay. All right, as soon as I'm done building the dumb counter, somebody remind me to reset it as soon as I turn it on. Now, Let's see if we can get it to work with an incandescent bulb. And I'm not gonna get into a lot of the technical details, but we're gonna replace an LED with a MOSFET, do some other voodoo, and... Yes! <laughs> now, I got a lot more programming to do, but uh, most of that footage is, well, it'll pretty much look like this. So we'll just skip to something more visual.
if you want to see more detail on how I make circuit boards like this, even though I actually haven't done this in a while, I have a video from a few years ago on, uh, on all the details, linked down in the video description. You know, if this video makes it on Hackaday, the comment section is just going to be all about my shattering. Love you, Hackaday. For those who are interested in such things, I'm using an Adafruit Itsy Bitsy to control the whole thing, and I'm going to be controlling each of the lamp channels with shift registers. I'll put more information down in the uh, video description. Okay, so a lot of you expressed interest in buying one of these if I happened to make them. So I have designed this version with an old-fashioned chalkboard. I'm making them available on my website right now. I have no idea how many of these I'm going to end up making. This may end up being a short-run, limited edition. I honestly have no idea at this point. But I'm making each of them myself in this shop. So if you're interested, head over to my website and have a look. Now. Let's finish the electric version. Streaming out of the magnets. Uh...
New pornographers? Anybody? No? How did you get in here? You left the door unlocked. Quick tip, if you're making something that's supposed to look vintage, use slotted screws. They suck, but that's what you would find on something old. So, I bought this big button off Amazon, but... I bought this big button off Amazon, but... Big button is not big enough. So I used the 3D printer that Creality sent me to not only print this bezel and the circuit board mount in the back, but also a much bigger button. Now that's a button. All right, now let's upload a test and see what it looks like. <laughs> that looks so good, he says, as though he hasn't been programming it for the last two days. All right, let's hang it up and see how it really works. Got to attach the bracket for hanging it up. Well, that's appropriate. Oh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You'll be hearing that sound around this shop a lot. Honestly, I'm not even sure why I added a second digit. Big thanks to Micro Center for making this project possible. Be sure to follow that link below for free stuff. Also, thanks to file, file. Also, thanks to Zyla Foxland for stopping by and helping out. If you're not subscribed to her, follow the link below. If you like my stuff, you'll love hers. She does some amazing, crazy projects. And be sure to follow me over at Instagram to see behind the scenes stuff and more shots of this beauty. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. God.